This card is surprisingly good. Hey guys, it's Sebastian, and today we're going to look at the City Custom Cash card, how it can tie into different setups, and why it makes sense whether you're someone focused on cash back or looking to do aspirational trips. As always, there's going to be a chapters tool down below if you need to skip parts. Big favorite from you guys is to give this a thumbs up and to share this with anyone else who might benefit. To me, the City Custom Cash card is a no-brainer add-on to anyone looking to play the game. Starting off, it has no annual fee, meaning that if you are someone that decides to run a different setup in the future, it doesn't hurt you. Number two, it's a card that fits into a lot of different slots and it works for you. So the core premise of the card is that you get 5% back or 5x thank you points on up to $500 in spend per month on your highest spend category based off the categories they have. So similar to the double cash, it earns cash back, but you can convert it to thank you points, meaning that it has a lot more upside potential. And we'll talk about that a bit more towards the middle. So 5% back on up to 500, anything after that 500, it's going to be 1% back. And for the other categories that you spend on that are not the largest, it's also 1% for that month. So let's say you have dining at 500 and travel at 400, you're going to earn 5% back on dining, but only 1% back on that travel. If it's flipped for the next month, then you're earning 5% back on travel. There's obviously a bunch of disadvantages depending on the style that you're playing, but for most people, this is going to be pretty helpful. The categories are super broad as well. This includes restaurants, gas stations, grocery stores, select travel, select transit, select streaming services, drug stores, home improvement stores, fitness clubs, and live entertainment. If you're someone who is a low spender, then you might be able to make this work as a one card setup. And I would guess that this is what City's hoping for. You put a bunch of spend on the card and effectively it still blends into about 2% back instead of really paying you out 5% on everything. For us though, we're pretty much treating this as a 5% back card on the category that we want to use it on. If you're someone watching basketball like me, this is the guy that can play point forward if he needs to, but otherwise you might not use him for that. We'll talk about the categories and my thoughts about them towards the middle, but gas is a pretty big one that a lot of people struggle to cover. One other really good thing is that you don't actually have to activate this. It's all automatic, so you don't have to pick categories. You don't have to do anything weird. Flipping over, we have the intro bonus, and it's surprisingly good. I'll actually cover this in the blog post, and that's going to be down below in the description box. And the main reason for this is because offers change and a lot of people who are new to the channel get a bit angry when the offer that I talk about on the screen right now is not the same that's live. Especially if it decreases by 50 or $100, I don't really wanna remake a whole video just because of that one little bit. It's really easy for me to update a blog post, but it's impossible to update a video because that's not really what you can do with YouTube videos. Know that it's super competitive though, and if I was someone that was not trying to get under 524, then I'd probably be applying. And for reference, we're generally looking for $100 to $200 back as an intro bonus for these no annual fee cards. In the past, City has been pretty stingy, so a lot of their no annual fee cards have had lower intro bonuses or sometimes no intro bonus. On that note, if you want to learn more about the City Custom Cash or pretty much any other card out there and you want to support the channel, we have links on our website, asksebi.com, and also down below in the description box. I'll probably pin a comment as well if you're someone looking for that, and yeah, thank you guys in advance. So let's talk about getting the card and some strategies that we can consider. Per the terms, you can get the bonus for opening the City Custom Cash once every 48 months. So no, you don't get a bonus for doing a product change to this card only for opening it. So arguably, if you're someone who really wants the city double cash and there's not currently an offer, there is a case of applying for this one, the custom cash, and then doing a product change to the double cash after. Basically, if you're getting a city card, you might as well get an intro bonus and then product change to that other card you want. More interesting though is treating this as a downgrade path for your other city cards. This is a huge question mark and I'm guessing that it's not going to work for one main reason. Our policy is to offer only one city custom cash. We'll see what the data points look like, but if we can product change into multiple of these cards, let's say you apply for one and then you downgrade a city premiere into another one of these, then it gets pretty interesting because you can have each one being specific categories earning you 5% back. If it works, I'll probably do a new video talking about the city 5X or 5% back on everything super robot transformer card or something equally stupid sounding. I've been pretty bullish, so let's talk about who should not get this card. I think if you're someone who does not like City, then obviously this is a skip. Move into the next card or the next video. 
Number two is if you're someone who spends a lot of money. So if you're someone who spends $3,000 on groceries and dining, then this probably doesn't move the needle and you're going to run into that wall. End of the day, I'm not judging you on how much money you spend and how you want to use it because it's your money, but I want to help you guys maximize it and this card probably is not for you. Number three is if you're someone who spends moderately but on a lot of different categories and you're trying to make this your one and done card. So for example, if you spend $500 on groceries, dining, and a lot of the other ones, this might not really make sense because there's other cards out there that don't cap you out on that value. Even if in the city ecosystem, something like the city premier card earns you only three X back, but it's on a bunch of other categories. And then you save this card for that specific five X one that you really want to use it for. If you think about it, City does want you to treat this as a one and done card and not to earn 5% back on a lot of categories, but this is not how we wanna play it. Number four is if you're someone in the early game, I'd recommend doing other cards first that are a bit harder to get due to the rules involved. So Chase is the obvious one, and then something like Barclays, and then US Bank, and Capital One. All of those issuers have very strict rules related to what you can get approved for, given how many new cards you've gotten. The funny thing is that I talk about Barclays and I put them in that category too, but I don't even have links for them, but I still recommend them because I don't want you to leave a card on the table that you otherwise could have gotten. And that was one of my big regrets. I pretty much rushed through this whole process because I got excited about the shiny new card, but it was kind of a mistake. On the flip side, who should get this card? I think if you're someone on Team Cashback and you're looking for low hanging fruit offers, then this is an awesome one. Number two is if you're someone who is looking for 5% back. So 5% is pretty much the top range that we're looking for for cards, and this gets you that. There is a cap, but I think it's still fine, especially for lower spenders. Number three is a pretty obvious one, and it's the fact that it can fill a lot of holes that are in your setup. Number four for travel people is that this cash back can turn into thank you points, which can then be transferred out to partners. So in this case, something like 5x back is really 5x thank you points back, meaning that you have 5x partner points. Probably beyond the scope of this video, but if you have $200 in cash back here, that's 20,000 thank you points, which transfer over to 20,000 partner points. And you can probably find flights that are about $400 in value for those 20,000 points. So the big question is how should you treat this card? Number one is going to be restaurants, and I don't think I would slot this card over because there's so many other cards that focus on restaurants. It's pretty much a competitive category for every issuer, and they're already fighting for this, so there's so many other options. Even if you're only earning something like 3x back on the other card, I would probably do that and then put this 5x back on something else. With all of these, your mileage may vary, so do what makes sense for you. This is just my thought process. I think you'll be pretty surprised with mine too because of the number of cards I have and the fact that it's not actually covered. Gas is a pretty good one because a lot of the other cards that have gas are either rotating category cards or ones that are business cards that are just harder to justify. For a lot of people out there, you have cars and you have to pay for gas anyways, and this is a recurring expense every single month, so it's good to have a card that does this category. Factor in that other cards that used to do this, like the Ducks Unlimited, no longer offer it. So it's a pretty good replacement in this situation. Transit's pretty much the flip side of this, the city person's version of gas. I would argue that there's a lot of other cards that cover transit though, so maybe not as valuable. For example, the Chase Sapphire Preferred and the Preserve and a lot of those other cards treat transit within the travel category, so you're good to go there. On kind of a related note, the US Bank Cash Plus card, which lets you pick two different categories where you're earning 5% back, and I think we've talked about that card in the past before, but that card also has transit as a category, so it might make sense to add that one as well. Or I guess if you have that one, then this card might not be as useful, but hopefully that makes sense. Grocery stores is a pretty good one because it's something that we all end up doing. We all have to eat. Even people who go out a lot probably still buy some groceries. I think this is a pretty good choice if you don't have other cards that are specifically for it. Just depends on the setup that you're running. If you spend a lot on groceries, then I probably would go for those other cards that have that as a focus. Next one is travel, and I'd be pretty hesitant putting travel on this card. Maybe if you're doing Airbnb and only that, then that's fine. But I feel like for a lot of the other things like airlines, so flights, as well as hotels, there's a lot of other choices out there that either get you more points or get you more protection. And when you think of travel insurance and those benefits, it's one of those things that you don't really care about until what happens. And the moment it does, you're going to feel really stupid for not having that. Factor in that city has been pretty good about cutting off travel benefits in the past. 
with things like the prestige card. I think if you're someone looking to buy those benefits elsewhere, if you're buying insurance or if you have your own insurance that covers this, then maybe that's fine. But I just like my cards to cover my travel stuff. For streaming, I don't think my streaming bill is as big as some of you guys. I think I just have Netflix and probably Disney Plus tomorrow or tonight. Yeah, I think for most people, it's not going to move the needle. And if it does, then that's great. Reminder that US Bank also has this covered as a category and a lot of other issuers are now looking to do things where if you put 12 months worth of your streaming stuff on the card, then it's a little bit subsidized, but yeah, worth looking into as well. Drugstores probably makes a lot of sense for people who need to use it for its intended purpose or if you're someone buying gift cards for other retailers. So I know for my drugstores near me, CVS and Walgreens, I can almost always buy gift cards for places like Old Navy, Banana Republic, as well as Lululemon, I think. So you're pretty good if you want to do that type of stuff. Might not be as useful here because you have so many choices anyways, but yeah, just another option. Home improvement, I think is fine, but I'm not as versed in this as some of you guys are. My guess is that it would probably not be enough. I think you would hit that cap pretty easily. Maybe for people who are landlords and you have a lot of different properties, if you need to buy paint and stuff to do maintenance anyways, then probably pretty useful. But yeah, let me know down below if that 500 ends up being a cap. Ironically, I think fitness clubs is going to be the opposite. So for most people, you're not going to spend up to that cap and it might not be the most useful. If it does, then it might also make sense to look into the US Bank Cash Plus card just because it has that as a category. Live entertainment is the one that I'm most excited for because most other cards out there don't have this as a category. Factor in that the US is opening back up and a lot of these events cost $100 to $200 anyways. Main takeaway is that the City Custom Cash card is super competitive given that it's a no annual fee card and it's something that's actually solving a pain point. I'm just really happy that it's not a copy paste of another card that is kind of a crappier version. This is at least a bit different. For us, this means that it actually moves the needle and is a bit impactful. There are some weaknesses and it does lean towards team cash back and also optimizers, but I think it's a good thing and it's a step in the right direction. As someone who has more than 40 cards, I don't have one that covers entertainment. Again, if you want to learn more about the City Custom Cash or pretty much any card out there, we have links on our site, asksebi.com, and also down below in the description box. If you're someone traveling and you want to make sure that your information is secure, especially if you go on public Wi-Fi's, then check out something like Surfshark. You can get 83% off and three months for free by using code AskSebi. Link to that will also be down below. My question for you guys is, of the categories that this card can fill, which one are you looking to fill it with? Also, are you surprised that I don't have entertainment covered? Let me know and everyone else know in the comments down below. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. If you know anyone else who benefit, then share this with them. It'll probably help them out. But otherwise, hope you guys liked it. See you guys next time.